Welcome to Old Man Gaming, the series where I nerd out on video games from my Gen X youth starting with early platforms like Pong and the TRS-80 through today with Xbox and PlayStation. In this impromptu episode, I'm going to be giving my first impressions of Jedi Survivor, which dropped Friday as the highly anticipated sequel to 2019's Jedi Fallen Order. I want to be clear, though, this isn't going to be one of those I finished the whole game in an hour and a half, aren't I awesome, kind of gameplay videos. Those have their place, and I respect both the hustle and the skill of the folks who do those. But I'm 53 years old and have played just about every Star Wars video game ever made. This video is going to be about skill trees. What I learned from one past game in particular about the math behind game mechanics and how you can apply that to your early Jedi Survivor experience. I'll give a nod to kiting and skill point farming techniques along the way, and throughout I'll do my best to avoid spoilers. The original Jedi Fallen Order took some of the concepts first laid down in Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight of progressively improving force abilities, but did so in a way that engaged me emotionally, which was very different for a Star Wars game. The way Fallen Order treated Cal's relationship with Jaro Tapal was so well done, even when you know Order 66 is coming, that scene choked me up more than once. Disney could do a lot worse than having a limited series based on Fallen Order. Fallen Order wasn't the first Star Wars game to offer a customizable skill tree. Neither 1995's original Star Wars first-person shooter Dark Forces, nor did its aforementioned sequel have them, but the last entry in that series, 2003's Jedi Academy, had them, as did 2003's Knights of the Old Republic. Star Wars Galaxies, also from the early 2000s, was a third-person, massively multiplayer online game, along the lines of World of Warcraft, but set in the Star Wars universe between the events of A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. I played Galaxies up to 20 hours a week for almost two years, and it was so much fun, it has a healthy emulation community 20 years later. Link in the description below. Here's some muted, modern emulator gameplay from YouTuber Akano. Link in the description below. Combat in Galaxies was turn-based and relied heavily on cooperative play, most often in the form of guilds, because higher-level adventures required multiple players whose skills complemented each other. Here you see a cooperative group of seven players taking on two high-level super battle droids. Notice how the heavily armored players are in the front. Here and here. From their titles, both have melee skill tree mastery and are able to absorb lots of damage. The one on the right in the silver armor also has Master Doctor and can heal themselves, making them an effective tank. The other five players all keep their distance, letting their melee teammates take the bulk of the damage while they attack. In the lower left-hand corner, notice the combat window, which constantly spews out a running dialogue of what's happening, including stats on who is doing and receiving damage. Paying attention to this combat window, which I'll slow down the footage so you can see it better, changed the way I think about third or first person games like this. By revealing the math behind the game mechanics, it taught me just how important extending fights against higher level enemies can be. In Galaxies, that meant players taking on healing tank roles that couldn't defeat higher level enemies on their own, but were important in cooperative team play. Let's relate those lessons back to Jedi Fallen Order, where on Bagano, among the first decisions you have to make is when to take on this high-level enemy frog. Just about every player who's played Fallen Order got wasted by this enemy early on because your skills just aren't ready yet. But what if they were? If you do just a little skill point farming on Bagano to build out the following skill tree, heavy on regenerating both health and force meters, but light on offense, you can extend the fight against that frog and give yourself a better chance. Thanks, BD1. If you also get the extra stim on the early map, even better. Stim, BD1. This location stim. with the lower level frog you can Close attack left. from above via the nearby meditation point is a really good early skill point farming spot on Bagano. You can take out these five enemies in this area, meditate again to make them respawn, rinse and repeat, not until you've built the entire skill tree, 
but enough to get you ahead of where the developers assume you're going to be. With a little patience, you can then use a kiting technique steps. to draw the high-level frog over to the opening in the room, where you can retreat to and heal yourself, safely extending the fight and increasing your odds of success. Your reward for doing this in Fallen Order is a life essence, which puts you again ahead of schedule since the developers assume you won't beat this frog the first time through. Applying these lessons learned from Galaxies and Fallen Order to Jedi Survivor, I'm about 10 hours into my gameplay using a similar strategy. Here I filled in the key components to the Survivor tree so that I have maximum health, maximum BD heal effectiveness, and fill my block meter faster. Then over on the Force Jedi Concentration tree, I maxed out my Force meter and regeneration. The skill point farming spot I used is Fort Colin. And let me show you some gameplay that'll explain why. Notice at the beginning of the sequence I start with about half a skill point. It really doesn't matter what order you go through the sequence, and even if you find another spot, really what you're looking for is a bunch of enemies clustered together near a meditation point where you can reset them. I ended up going up the health skill tree first, and the force regeneration one second, and I wish I had done maybe the reverse of that. Because as you're going to see in this sequence, when you fight super battle droids, they've got those missiles that you need to force push away from you. And without that, they can be difficult to get rid of. Plus, in all these years of playing Star Wars games, I just can't resist stormtroopers standing next to an open edge without any kind of guardrail. Force pushing those guys into oblivion just never gets old for me. So that's one group taken care of. Let's go over here and find another pair. The other reason I like this area is there's all these obstacles that you can take advantage of. That you can jump over, but your opponents can't. And it forces them to take awkward angles. And you can take advantage of that. So there's one of those force push examples. Out of all the enemies in the area, these melee guys I find the most difficult to deal with. They have counterparts that shoot rifles that you can deflect pretty easily. But these melee guys, at least at this skill level, I found pretty nasty. So group two taken care of. Group three, I'm gonna go up here. Three easy battle droids. Understood. There's a couple of guys down there I can go take care of, and I'm gonna go do that first. There's a couple of those rifle guys I was just talking about. And they also drop those mines that you can force push into people. Now that the melee guy's taken care of, it's just a matter of blocking these guys until they're gone, and that's super easy. Now there's two more up here, and then another group of battle droids. Now up here, because of these tight quarters, I'm gonna use the force slow up here in a minute to give me an advantage with these two. And I miss, like an idiot, and I hit the second time, and pretty quickly take care of that super battle droid. This guy will take a little more time. want to protect me. Try to confuse him a little bit there so I can get in a free shot and I blow it. I have to back off here and get some heal. There's a good parry though.
Finally over here, there's this bigger group of battle droids. And again, you can use a kiting technique to draw some of them over here towards you. So you don't have to fight them all at once. And the block is super helpful here too. Now in this run at least, there's one more group. And do you remember in the Phantom Menace, in the Battle of Naboo, the ground war, there's those big troop transports? There's one of those guys over here. And they send multiple waves at you. Now that little metal barrier ends up being pretty important. You try to kite these guys, draw them over and break up their numbers. Because there's going to be multiple waves dropping out of that troop transport. There I use a little bit of confusion to use that guy as a tank so I can get relatively free shots at the battle droids. But then when I come behind the barrier, they have to take a longer path and I can kind of break them up a little bit. There's the force push again against the super battle droid. And another one. And if you just continue to kite them out here, you can break them up pretty well. Another force push. The other thing I want to do here is make sure that the next wave of guys that comes over here, I don't accidentally engage them sooner than I want. I'm going to use this barrier one more time. There's four of these assassin droids, I think is what these guys are called. Two of them are melee, and two of them have rifles. I'm going to use the barrier a couple of times to get the melee guys to split up a little bit. Oh, and that one actually jumped over the barrier that time. But really, with the flex, I'm trying to take care of the rifle guys first before I have to deal with the melee ones. That one gets in a good shot, and I'm going to need a heal. Now I just got the two left. I use the four slow so I can get in some decent damage. Get rid of one of them. Oh, there's one rifle guy left. I try to get out of line of sight here for a minute for the rifle guy, but then I'm kind of drawn back. Finally, I go take care of the rifle guy myself. Take one big hit there. And this last guy is just being pesky. Having trouble getting rid of him. It's in another good shot on me. But I finally get the parry I'm looking for. Take him out and cap off the skill point. Now let's meditate. And I'll start the sequence over again. That's about seven minutes worth of work at this stage in my character growth. And I got about half a skill point each time for my efforts. I didn't fill out the entire skill tree to this point using that farming spot, but I did that maybe 8 to 10 times to give myself a boost. That's it for this video, but in my next task in Jedi Survivor, I'm going to experiment with the confusion skill tree. So far I've noticed on those farming runs that you can make an enemy tank for you, but the downside is you don't get the skill point credit when they take out an opponent for you. Together. I suspect that later in the game, when you have the pistol stance, which I've not unlocked yet, it'll be effective to create a confusion tank and then sit back at a distance and pick off those bad guys without risking damage. What about you? What have you found to be good early Jedi survivor game strategies? Comment below. Follow me on Instagram for episode previews and other nerdy stuff. Link in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, you can help others see it by liking and subscribing. Thanks so much for watching, and enjoy Jedi Survivor!